just getting ready um, and yeah I'm going to show you something that I have finished because I will be putting it on in um, in just a bit and then you will see it anyway but I just wanted to show you the ends that I <laughs> need to weave in <laughs> Look at those ends! And there's more on the other sleeve. Hooray! I'm not going to finish sewing all of those in before I start recording, but um, a lot of ends. <laughs> Hi everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. My name is Carmen, and this is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. Hi everyone! Um, I am very excited to show you what I'm wearing. And last time, so last week, I did a live podcast episode on Thursday, and I will be doing a live podcast episode every first Thursday of the month, so the next one is on March Fourth, I think, um, and it's gonna be at 3 p.m. CET, so that is around, I think, it's the early morning in the US, I think 9 a.m. or something, um, and it will be around midnight <laughs> in Australia. And in that live podcast episode, I was almost finished with my Spectre sweater. Um, I was just finishing off the second sleeve, and now it is finished and blocked and oh, I, I had um, put it on as soon as I cast it off but um, blocking just makes such a huge difference. Um, the yarn is just way more flowy than before blocking. Um, yeah, it, it just feels really nice. This is uh, Wool Metfeave yarn. It's her Merino Twist sock. And it was um, this whole fade was the um, yarn advent calendar from last year. So 2020, I was the December advent calendar. <clears throat> And uh, she still has similar skeins in her shop, I think. She, she had some more uh, fade sets, but um, now she has some more um, bigger skeins of some of the colors in here. Um, yeah, and it's just really, really nice. Um, I have already recorded a clip of me standing up and showing you the cardigan so I will put that in and ugh, I'm just so glad with how it turned out. Um, I love the colors, I love the fit of the sweater, it is not too oversized but also not fitted um, which is what I was going for. I just wanted it to be a nice flowy fabric and just one of those um, sweaters that you can wear as a more fancy outfit. Um, a lot of the sweaters I make, uh, sometimes I finish them and then, then I think, okay, well, I'll just wear this to a craft fair or something. Um, you know, <laughs> one that has too many colors or is, uh, or the big fluffy mohair sweater that I made. Um, or, you know, a really over-the-top Stephen West sweater or shawl. Um, those, those types of projects, I finish those and I think, okay, well, um, the craft community will appreciate this, but uh, maybe if I just wear it out in public, people will be thinking like, <laughs> Well, <laughs> and um, I feel like this is such a beautiful, wearable sweater, and it's it's not over the top, even though it has a lot of colors. Um, it, you know, the original version um, that Hohi Locatelli designed. So um, this is her design, the Spectre sweater by Hohi Locatelli, and her original pattern um, calls for four uh, skeins that fade into each other. So. Uh, I, I don't know exactly where it fades, um, but 
you know, it has a more uniform look, whereas this one, <laughs> I'm going to get up again, whereas this one is just a little bit more chopped up. Um, even though the fade is very gradual, um, yeah, it's, it's still, you know, you have various points of interest. You're like, <laughs> uh, when you see the sweater for the first time, you're like, okay, uh, I want to look at all the colors. Um, uh, so I think the original one is even more wearable, but um, yeah, having said that, I just love this sweater so much. Um, I'll go over the details for what I did again. So the Spectre sweater, it comes in a lot of sizes. Um, and originally I wanted to do the L size um, because according to the pattern that would fit me. Uh, but then I got a really tiny gauge um, and also I got a tiny gauge with the needle that the pattern calls for which is 3.25 millimeter um, I think it is yeah 3.25 and but I thought the fabric was too loose and I sort of envisioned this sweater that you know, would be gaping and um, after washing it would stretch out hugely. I was just envisioning that and I thought, no, I want a tighter fabric. So I went for a three millimeter needle. So my tight gauge got even tighter, of course. Um, so in order to, for me to still knit the pattern and get the fit that I wanted, um, I needed to knit size 3XL. So um, yeah, that is just to accommodate for my tiny gauge, but um, I really, really like how it turned out. Uh, I like the um, neckline. Um, um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm just really, uh, I just really like the sweater because uh, if I'm not mistaken, the original or the sweater how it is written with its gauge would have a longer or a uh, wider neckline and you know the stitches would be more stretched out um, and yeah <laughs> I'm just really really happy um, the thing to take into account if you're knitting with a tighter gauge than the pattern calls for is that you will most likely have way more stitches um say that um, um you know i can't remember the um stitch counts but uh say if the size large were to have around 250 stitches around the bust and the uh 3xl size uh, has around 400 stitches around the bust so that would be 150 stitches extra uh, that I would be knitting because of the tighter gauge. So do take that into account. Um, if you're thinking, okay, do I want to work with my tighter gauge or do I want to uh, use a bigger needle size? The other thing you want to take into account is that you will probably need more yarn. Um, you will need um, the amount of yarn, more or less, uh, that the bigger size calls for. And um, yeah, <laughs> uh, since I had um, 24 minis, 24, um, I think there were 20 gram minis? Mm, not sure. Um, yeah, I just had to take into account that um, I would have to watch my yardage very closely or that I might run out. Uh, on the sleeves. Um, and I will also say I followed the pattern width wise for 3XL um, because to accommodate for my gauge width wise. Length wise, I uh, made sure to try it on every so often um, because um, I'm very short. And, um, you know, for gauge lengthwise, you can just see where the sweater is on your body. And if you want to, um, um, yeah, if you want to add or 
um, take off any rows. So what I did is uh, directly after the um, stitch pattern ends. So here on the yoke, there is kind of like a cable stitch pattern. Directly after that ended, I blocked the yoke uh, and I tried it on and I found that, you know, I had to only knit a couple more rounds before starting uh, the sleeves. Whereas the pattern for the 3XL size would have me knit a couple more rounds. So yes, a lot of maths. <laughs> I do not advise, um, you know, doing this I do not recommend doing all this gauge magic and customizing your pattern uh, if you are a beginner knitter. But um, I consider myself a very experienced knitter um, and I was prepared to frog. <laughs> so uh, that's why I just um, gave it a whirl and it uh, turned out amazing. So yes, um, I'm not sure if I want to say anything more about this. <laughs> I could talk about it all day. Uh, if I miss anything, do let me know in the comments and I will then reply to your question. Um, see, if I were to do this live, I could just ask you guys. Um, yeah. Um, I think that is it. So yes, I am still weaving in all of the ends. I have woven in the, um, the ends that are closest to the edges everywhere so that it won't poke out uh, while I'm wearing it, but uh, there are a lot of ends as you will have seen in the little clip that I put in um, at the start of this podcast episode. Um, but honestly, I don't mind weaving in ends. I don't mind it too much. Um, what else? Right, the majority of this sweater is knit from the inside out. Uh, so the sweater is mostly purl stitches on the outside. After the yoke, you switch to the wrong side so you have mostly mostly knit stitches to do. I was very grateful to Hohi for that. Um, what I did do differently was that before the ribbing starts, I switched back to the right side. I think I mentioned this briefly uh, last time uh, because uh, this is twisted rib and if you are doing twisted rib from the wrong side that means you uh, need to purl through the back loop which is a pain in the ass. So um, yeah, switching to the right side meant that I could knit through the back loop which is sufficiently painful as it is. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's not too bad. It's just, uh, yeah, with, um, with twisted rib, I'm just happy when it's over. Yeah, but um, overall, I think I did really well uh, time-wise with this sweater. Uh, I started it somewhere in December and it's still the beginning of February, so <laughs> I call that a win and uh, yes I will have many more ends to weave in but that's a job for the weekend I think. Um, right so now onto the progress board. So here is my work in progress board and you can see the Spectre sweater up here and yeah <laughs> it's not very exciting I'm just gonna fill in that last 10% or 5%, I'm not sure what we said, and I'm gonna add a little, <laughs> I don't know what this is called, uh, ta-da, it's done. <laughs> um, yes, so I will be taking the Spectre sweater off the board and I will be putting something else on there, which I'm not sure if I will be revealing yet this episode. Right, so, <laughs> uh, do you, do you also have this feeling when you finish a sweater and then you wear it and you kind of have 
a honeymoon phase or something like it's so special and every time you put it on you're like hmm it's so nice <laughs> what do you call that well yeah the sweater honeymoon period yeah the help me think of a name for that right and I have another finished object <laughs> so last time I showed you this sock this time I finished the other sock isn't that cool my scrappy socks yes I am very very happy with these socks and I think they also look very happy um, I'm just yeah the pattern will be coming tomorrow so look out for the scrappy sock pattern uh, it's not a very original name but I thought you know these are this the scrappy socks in my head so why call them anything else and I figured is if someone is gonna search for a pattern for scrappy socks they're just gonna google scrappy socks and then hopefully that will lead them to my pattern right um yeah to be fair I could have also called them like leftover socks or stash buster socks but for me they are scrappy socks um so yes the details this yarn is scapius metropolis um i have a bunch of leftovers from this yarn pack that i had um so scapius metropolis used to have this big color pack with 80 minis in there 80 times 10 grams it was amazing you had just have this painter's palette box of beautiful colors and you know sock yarn so that means you can do anything with it you know you can do socks you can do sweaters you can do hats and I did all of them <laughs> with that sock uh, with that kit so um, I used that yarn initially for my around the world sweater Mm, I'll put a picture up in here. Um, so my around the world sweater, uh, it was uh, or it is a free pattern on my blog. Uh, you can also get it as a paid PDF, and the PDF includes the um, the <laughs> what's it called <laughs> color list um, of you know suggested color pairings for um, the color pack because you know you have 80 colors. Uh, you might know how to pair a couple of them together, but for color work it is really really vital that they contrast together well or you know well enough and for 80 colors that can be challenging. You know if you try to do it yourself uh, you might have a bunch of colors that are unmatched that you can't figure out. So uh, I saved you the trouble and I did all of that for you. Um, so yes, if you have one of these color packs, then you can make this exact same sweater. And then you can make these exact same socks because the color list will also be included in this pattern um, for these crappy socks. Um, but, you know, if, if you don't have the color uh, pack, I think it's unavailable to get at the moment. Um, you know, I just want to recommend looking at your own stash because it is so satisfying to use up scraps, uh, to use up leftovers. Um, and I think we all have this kind of urge to clean up at the start of a new year. Um, it's uh, undoubtedly very much societally induced behavior. Um, <laughs> but I thought, you know, we can make something fun out of it, right? So instead of spring cleaning, we do a scrap along. So as I was saying last time, or I, I actually had the idea for this last time, uh, last week when I was live, I was like, <gasps> A scrap along. Um, so yes, we're gonna have a scrappy make along, and you can make whatever you like. So um, 
I'll continue talking about the socks in just a minute. So the scrap along is starting on Valentine's Day, uh, Sunday, February 14th, and is going on until April Fool's Day. <laughs> so April 1st, um, it was not intentional that both of these days were holidays, but last year um, I started a make along on February 14th. Uh, which was the Cozy Moments Make Along, which was one of the most successful things in my whole knitting career. Um, and it was so much fun. So I just, I just wanted to do that again. And I thought maybe I can start a make along each year at February 14th, right? So, um, so yes, we are going to come together virtually and, um, work together on our scrappy projects. Um, now, <laughs> here come the teacher fingers. Uh, now, some rules for the scrap along. And if you are in my Facebook group, um, New Leaf Designs Knitting and Crochet Crew, then you will have seen these rules already. And I haven't written down all of them, but here are <laughs> proper teacher style. Here are um, most of them. So the scrap along goes from February 14th to April 1st. Knitting and crochet projects are allowed. No other crafts. No works in progress. So your project, you know, if you want to enter for prizes, your project must be started on February 14th or after. February 14th. Um, so the chatter and prize thread will all be going in my Facebook group, New Leaf Designs Knitting and Crochet Crew. Um, each project must have at least five different yarns, of which at least three yarns must be leftover yarns. So um, scrappy yarns. Yarn scraps? <laughs> um, so yes, uh, I have based this on the smallest project uh, being a pair of socks and I thought okay well five different yarns is reasonable for a pair of socks. You know if you were to make a sweater or a shawl you might go way overboard uh, which I applaud, um, you know, go big or go home, right? Except for we are already home, scratch that. Um, so yes, I base it on a very small project, but of course, you know, the sky's the limit. So at least five different yarns, at least three leftover yarns. Um, I have a bunch of patterns, pattern ideas for you that I will go over in just a minute. If you want to enter in this scrap along for prizes, please do make sure that you stick to all of these rules. Again, all of the rules are um, up in my Facebook group. If you want to donate prizes, please do contact me via email. You can do that at hello at newleafdesigns.nl. Um, I will also say that, um, you know, you can, you can make socks, you can make a sweater, you can make a shawl, you can make hats. You can make, you know, whatever, a blanket. Um, but I will, um, for the smaller projects, so socks, hats, uh, a scarf, shawl, depending on how big the shawl is, um, I will require that they are completely finished by the end of the cowl, um, by the end of the scrap along. Um, in order for them to be eligible for prizes, if you are making a big project such as a huge ass shawl or a sweater or a blanket, then I will require them to be 50% done because they are bigger projects. So yes, um, yes, I think that is all that I wanted to say about the scrap along rules. Um, yes, and I'm just really excited to get started. It starts on Sunday. I have a new cast on planned and I just want to go through some of the possible pattern choices for, um, oh, that's what I wanted to say, uh, pattern choices for the uh, scrap along. And if 
you choose to do a new leaf designs pattern, so my scrappy socks or any of the other patterns that I'm gonna, or you know, any pattern that I have uh, published, uh, then you can enter twice for prizes. Right, so um, let me finish talking about these scrappy socks first. So they are an adult sized sock pattern. I have them available in six adult sizes, which is what I normally do for sock patterns. Um, so I don't have any kid sizes available. Uh, they are from uh, women's size EU, so European size 35 to 30 uh, to European size 47. So that's basically women's small to men's large. Um, yeah, adult small to adult large. Um, they are written for toe up socks. They have instructions for the German shorter heel included in there, plus links to toe up cast on and the shorter heel. Um, they include instructions for Lori's twisty bind off. And of course I have the, um, numbers in there for where you want to start your heel and all of the things necessary for you to make good fitting socks. Um, so the pattern will be up tomorrow. I will just be finalizing the pattern today. Um, I still have to take one picture and um, I have to translate it to the Dutch version. So it will be available in English and in Dutch. Um, yeah. And the color sequence, as I said, is in there, you know, completely. This is all Scapey's Metropolis yarns. Um, if you, if you say, okay, well, I really like this portion, or I really like this portion of the sock, then you can purchase those colors and make your socks from that. Um, Yes, but of course, in order to count for the scrap along, you want to be using at least three leftover yarns. Oh, and I had a question about what counts as a leftover yarn. Um, one uh, person in my Facebook group asked if she were to frog a project and use that frogged yarn, uh, would that also count? And I say yes, that will also count as leftover yarn because you have used it previously for a project um, and now it goes into this project. So if this um, make-along motivates you to frog old projects and use that yarn, feel free, right? Feel free. Um, right, so I think that is all about the scrappy socks. No, that is not all. Um, um, I, for this scrappy sock, for these scrappy socks, um, I have a special method for weaving in ends. I do not weave in ends with a sewing needle on these socks, except for the very first part and the heel and the very last. Yeah. But for the most part of the sock, I have a, another method of weaving in ends. My Patreon, uh, my Patreon page already has the tutorial video, uh, but the PDF will also have a photo tutorial. I spent all of yesterday <laughs> uh, taking those pictures to put into the pattern. So yes, if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can still get that uh, tutorial um, included in the PDF. The video will also be released on my YouTube channel in a couple months. I just want to have it as an early access thing for my patrons first. Right, so that is all about my socks. And then I have also released another pattern this week. So, uh, this is actually a new version of an existing pattern. You might remember my cozy moment shawl. Um, and this is the new version of that pattern. Everyone who has already purchased the pattern will have received an update with this new PDF. So, um, 
So the original Cozy Moment Shawl was uh, designed for Escapius Whirl, which is a big gradient yarn cake. I have one right there. And then I did another version for Escapius Whirly Gig, which was a huge yarn cake, DK weight gradient. It's amazing. Uh, there's alpaca in there. Go check it out. Um, so I had two gradient versions. And then I also designed this version with Scapius Skies. It is a 100% cotton yarn dyed with indigo. And uh, alongside the 100 gram skeins, Scapius also have a mini skein set. Um, well, the skeins aren't exactly mini, as they are 28 grams each. Um, I'm not sure what that translates to if you were to use um, merino minis, because cotton weighs heavier. So a 28 gram mini of cotton might be lighter in uh, merino. So they are, um, I think the meterage is 95 meters per mini skein. There are nine different colors and they are all included in a mini skein pack and they are now back in stock. <laughs> I had actually um, designed this pattern a while ago or this version. Um, and and the yarn was not in stock so uh, now it is and you can order the mini skein set for this exact same version. So what is different from the um, original Cozy Moments? So um, first off, I, um, I have the color sequence in the pattern for this exact same yarn and uh, I tell you when to change color. But um, another change is that um, the, so the first part, the first part is the same but um, the, I don't know from which um, lace section, um, but some of the lace repeats are shorter on this shawl in order to make it work for the uh, minis. So, yeah, you can see that they are shorter. So, for example, this section, was I think three times as long on the uh, original Cozy Moments. So yeah, and um, it's not even that small. I mean, um, it's still, it might be a shawlette, but still it is quite a nice size. I mean, now I've wrapped it, but you don't even have to wrap it. You can also drape it across your shoulders. And then, you know, it it is quite a nice size. Um, and you know, it's cotton, so it doesn't need to be very big uh, because, you know, if you want a big shawl, you probably also want it to be warm. And cotton is not warm, so that doesn't add up. See what I mean? So, um, so yeah, a cotton chalette, uh, doesn't need to be very big, but still it, it's, it's almost to my elbow. In fact, it is to my elbow. Um, and I can also drape it a little bit lower. Yeah, it's, it's just a really great size. Um, so yes, this pattern is available now. It is included. Um, in the PDFs if you purchase the Cozy Moment Shawl pattern, either from my New Leaf webshop or from uh, Ravelry. And you can now get a 20% off, or you can get 20% off if you use the code STRAPALONG. So in all caps, no spaces, STRAPALONG. Um, because I figured this would also be wonderful to uh, knit with leftovers. How great would that be if you would have some leftovers from your stash and you could knit this whole shawl with it? And it is also suitable for beginners because I have step-by-step -step tutorial videos on my YouTube channel here, starting from the cast on and for every lace pattern in here. So 
yeah, I'm just, yeah, happy that I finally published this pattern because it has been a long time coming. Uh, some of my testers will know that. Um, and maybe you have a Sepia Skies box at home that you were waiting for a project. And now you can knit this one. So yeah, for the scrap along, the scrappy socks are a great pattern to do. You have my Cozy Moment Shawl minis version. And so it's not, I don't just have patterns for knitters. Um, you can also do my Chevrain Boat Blanket, the zigzaggy uh, blanket with almost one new color used for every row that it would be super fun to do uh, with leftovers. Uh, that one I designed for a Scapia Stone Wash, so that would be amazing with leftover acrylic yarn. Um, if you have a lot of leftover cotton, you can do my Rainbow Sea Waves blanket, which is kind of the same um, idea as a Shiv Rainbow blanket, but the Rainbow Sea Waves blanket um, is made for cotton yarn so it's made for a lighter well not particularly lighter but thinner yarn so it has a wider repeat and each row uses 10 grams of cotton so if you uh, use another um, content yarn for that you might need less grams and then you also have uh, my rainbow sprinkle purse. Um, I noticed that I have a lot of rainbow patterns. Uh, so I have a crochet purse pattern. I have the striped and stranded socks, the striped and stranded hat, now the home hat. And you know, I have tons of patterns that could be amazing to knit or crochet in this scrap along. But by all means, you know, you can you don't have to do my patterns. Um, I would love to see any kind of pattern um, in the scrap along and you can share in the Facebook group or on Instagram with the hashtag new leaf scrap along. And do please also tag me on Instagram because I would love to see it um, and do share it with your friends. Um, I just want as many people as possible participating in this make along. I really want to do another pair of scrappy socks but with wider stripes so I don't make it quite so difficult on myself and I have assembled all of my well not all but some of my leftover sock yarn here um just you know I have some tiny balls left oops and then some bigger uh leftovers this was the um oh red riding hood self-striping yarn um, I have some, I don't know what this is, probably drops or regia, this is regia, uh, line yarns, um, some indie dyed, uh, West Yorkshire spinners, yeah, I have a lot of leftover sock yarns. So I think I will be knitting some more scrappy socks, but I also have another project that I really want to cast on. And I actually <laughs> cast it on last night and then I didn't like the first color so I <laughs> ripped it out. Um, I am planning to do another sweater, a scrappy sweater, um, that will be a new pattern. And I'm not going to tell you anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, right. I have to mark my progress for the scrappy socks. Right here, scrappy socks. They are also finished. Ta-da! I haven't worked on my handspun cardigan, the knit collage cardigan. It is still there. <laughs> I haven't even frogged at all. Um, yes, because I just wanted to focus on these two projects and I finished them and now I can move on. I did work a lot on some other projects, but they are secret. So 
so I cannot tell you. <laughs> okay, I think that is all from me today. Um, right, oh, um, the code scrap along for the 20% off on my shawl expires on February 15th. So that is on Monday. It will expire end of day Monday. Um, my time. So it will expire end of day CET midnight Amsterdam time Monday. So yes, you just have a couple of days for the 20% off. So if you haven't uh, bought the Cozy Moments shawl pattern yet, then you can do that now and you will get the new pdf as well so if you download it you're you'll uh, see four pdfs two in dutch two in english and one will be the original pattern and one will be the minis version pattern right oh before i forget <laughs> thank you for 10,000 subscribers yay <laughs> I had already reached 10,000 subscribers last week just before my live podcast and i totally forgot and yes what a milestone i mean yes this is huge i mean um other channels might get to a million subscribers just as fast uh but for knitting and crochet you know our <laughs> this is very niche uh people who knit and crochet and know about the internet um <laughs> so um i'm just really happy that I got to 10,000. Thank you all so, so much. Keep on subscribing if you haven't yet. Keep on sharing my videos. Keep on commenting, liking, and um, yes, thank you all so, so much. And I will see you all next week. Until then, bye-bye.